Hello everyone, this is Richard from Modern Healthspan. Today we'll have a look at a study which used gene therapy to extend the lifespan in mice by 41% and also improves metabolism, physical performance, and even prevents hair loss. The gene therapies they used were TERT and folistatin. Although these studies were done on mice, the therapies are also available in humans. In fact, if you recall, we interviewed Liz Parrish, one of the authors of the paper, who has taken the gene therapies herself. It took in 2015 to launch BioViva. Um, this was something that we have a, a, a patent pending on. I took two gene therapies. Uh, that was a dual gene therapy that's telomerase and uh, folistatin. So uh, this is... Uh, two gene therapies that create a synergistic effect. Mm -hmm. um, my biomarkers that we tested were my blood, my telomere length, um, MRI images. Uh, we did as much as we could at the time. And then after that, we started uh, collecting data on my microbiome, uh, my genome, my epigenome. And um, more recently, I have participated in uh, Clotho and PGC1-alpha. So I've taken all four, four of the gene therapies. The other reason the paper is special is that they used a novel viral vector to deliver the therapy. We spoke about this with Liz and also one of the other authors, Professor George Church, who discussed what he was doing to improve viral delivery mechanisms. Although this is a preprint, I find this line of research very promising. The idea of getting your body to produce its own factors to improve your health seems much better than having to take lots of pills. The treatment could also be something that is taken once a month or maybe less often. So we will certainly be watching for further news on this. First, a disclaimer that in this video, we are sharing a study that we found interesting. It is not a recommendation or medical advice. Here is the paper. New intranasal and injectable gene therapy for healthy life extension. As mentioned, it is a preprint which is currently available on BioArchive. And two of the authors are Professor George Church and Liz Parrish. In previous studies, it has been shown that overexpressing certain proteins can have a beneficial effect and these therapies were delivered by adeno-associated viruses. The issue with AAVs, as both Professor Church and Liz Parrish discussed when we talked to them, is that they have a very small capacity for genetic material. So in this study they used cytomegaloviruses or CMVs to deliver the material. These have a much larger capacity and although in this study only one gene was delivered, they can be used for multi-gene therapy. In this case, they looked at two proteins, TERT, or telomerase reverse transcription, and folistatin. We will have a brief look at these two in a minute. They generated separate CMVs, one for TERT and one for FST. They saw median lifespan extended by 41.4% and 32.5% respectively, which is a big jump. This is the first study to use CMVs to extend lifespan using both nasal and injection delivery. A number of health markers were also improved, such as glucose tolerance, physical performance, body weight and hair loss. Telomere shortening seen with aging was ameliorated with TERT and mitochondrial structural deterioration was halted in both treatments. Both methods of delivery worked well with long-lasting benefits and no carcinogenicity or other side effects. And in summary, translating into humans could have significant benefits associated with increased health span. I'm not going to go into detail on the genes, but here is a high-level overview of the two proteins that they are expressing. The first is TERT or telomerase reverse transcriptase. Telomeres shorten with every cell division until they get in too short and the cell can no longer divide. The shortening is because of the mechanism by which the DNA strands are copied loses a little bit of the telomere at the end with every division. TERT rebuilds telomeres, meaning that the cell can continue to divide. The next is folistatin, which helps with muscle growth. MYF5 promotes the growth of skeletal muscle and brown fat MYF5 is inhibited by TGF-beta, so slowing this muscle growth. TGF-beta is in turn inhibited by folistatin, so overall allowing more muscle growth. 
In the study, seven groups of eight aged female mice received one of the treatments for six months on a monthly basis. The dose was 10 to the 5 PFU or plaque forming units, which is a measure of virus quantity. The treatment started on 18 month mice, which is equivalent to a 56 year old human. Here is an explanation of the naming of the groups used in the following slide. Mocks were injected with a neutral substance. Wild type were given either the nasal or injection, but with a CMV with a gene that caused fluorescence but had no other effects. The TERT and FST groups had overexpressed TERT and folistatin respectively. Here are the survival curves. We can see that the folistatin group had a significant improvement in lifespan, reaching a maximum of 30, 37 months, and that the method of delivery, injection or nasal, did not seem to matter. The third group had an even better lifespan extension, with a maximum lifespan of 40 months. They also checked the expression of the proteins, and we can see that both TERT and FST were more highly expressed in the mice with the extra genes. A couple of physiological factors that they looked at were fur and body weight. We can see that the improved fur on the two mice receiving the treatment and that especially the folistatin group were able to maintain body weight much better. The red triangle on the top line of the graph was when they stopped the treatment for a while, which led to a faster loss of weight. The loss slowed down when the treatment was started again at the green arrow. The next two tests are for motivation and physical ability. The first is how many times a mouse attempts to escape from a beaker and we can see that the TERT mice did much better on this, making more attempts in three minutes. And the second, the beam crossing, is a measure of coordination. Both TERT and FST mice did better by crossing more quickly. And then for glucose tolerance and HbA1c, we can see that both of the treated groups had better clearance of glucose from the blood and also lower HbA1c markers. The final study was to look for the health and quantity of mitochondria in the heart and skeletal muscles. In both cases we can see that the two treated groups were much closer to the young control than to the elderly wild type or mock group. In the results, the longevity of the FSD group was unexpected. Folistatin does help with longevity by reducing frailty, but the effects appear to be more than was expected and as they say, needs further inquiry. They anticipate that the loss of muscle, as in sarcopenia or low gravity during space travel, could be mitigated by this treatment. Another surprise was that both treatments improved glucose control, though they say that the mechanisms are different. FST and TERT have shown positive effects in neurological diseases and they did see an increase in the expression of both of them in the brain, which does point to the treatment possibly helping with these conditions. It would be great to understand if the two would have compounding effects. Certainly I agree this would be a really interesting experiment. The regimen did require continued monthly administration to have a continuous effect, which would be useful for a treatment that needed to be episodic or only required under specific circumstances in case there was any side effects. And in summary they say further research on this is needed for its ability to impact the many diseases of ageing. I hope that you found the video informative. Please do hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button for any new video release notifications. Thank you so much for your kind support. I wish you all well and we'll speak to you again soon.